Hello wonderful interpreters and thank you again for tuning in to another video update. Now I know that this COVID-19 situation has been very, very difficult for all of us. We have missed work a lot of hours and so Ellen and I also announced last week that they're going to be using uh, their contracts with Language Link and Lionbridge for their telephonics and video needs and so you know this is putting us in a very rough spot. Um, uh, some of you have seen the petition that we have created um, asking Ellen and I to help us with that situation and allowing us to work from home if needed be um, but still uh, still get paid by the in-person fee schedule uh, only on a temporary basis because we want things to resume and we're expecting that whenever this COVID situation uh, 19 situation goes away we're gonna have in-person inter interpretation as the main modality as it should be and as we have been um, advocating so with that said we're going to focus uh, on this video about the apparent company that won the bid which is my language link so without uh, any more delaying let's get to it my language link LNI's apparent RFB successful bidder now, this is the company and their Facebook page, as you see right here, My Language Link Interpreters and Translators. And I want you to look at the logo right here because this is going to be important. And then you see at My Language Link. Okay, this is their Facebook page. And I wanted you to see that, you know, this is the company. Now, this is their website, mylanguagelink.org. And you see that they provide in-person interpretations, video remote interpretations, telephonic interpretations, document translation. This is what they do. And also a little bit about themselves. Language Link was founded in 2011. Okay, they have vast experience in the fields of medical and legal translation and have interpreters who are members of CT Partners for Health, ATA, remember that name, and all of these entities. Okay. Now, feel free to pause any of these slides if you have to, you know, read through all of this. I'm going to leave links to, uh, to some of this information. But this is something that Woofsey announced last week, Local 1671. Uh, they were saying, dear interpreters, it was a long wait, but the mystery is finally solved. Uh, they said, LNI has announced the apparent successful bidder of their request for proposals for LNI's face-to-face -face interpreting contract. It is a language company called My Language Link based in Connecticut. And I want you to remember this. This is a different company from Language Link, formerly CTS, which is based in Vancouver. And here is the website. So they're saying, like, check it out. And then, but here's, here's the, uh, where, where I find things a little fishy. They're like our union, Interpreters United, Woofsy, Ask Me, is in the process of gathering as much information as possible about this new vendor. So they don't know, supposedly, who these people are. They are in the process, quote unquote, of gathering as much information as possible about this new vendor. What we do know, very bolded here, however, is that my language link is not universal language services and that LNI has listened to our union's concerns about all of our past problems with ULS. So they're telling you right now, uh, LNI chose this company. We don't know who they are. We just know they're not CTS language link and that at least they're not ULS. So we're happy with that because they listen to us, right? So they don't know who they are. They're, they're gathering right here as much information as they can. Hmm. Let's put that to the test, shall we? Do you remember about One Lingua? Now, if you don't remember about One Lingua, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave a link in the description box here so you go and watch uh, that video that I made not long ago about One Lingua and their connection with uh, local 1671 leaders because, you know, we can't go through all of this, but I'll go through a couple of the things that I shared on that video just to refresh your memory if you watched it and if you didn't watch it, just so you know what it's all about. So One Lingua right here, um, it's, it was founded by Eduardo Zaldivar. Um, and the preferred name for them was E Interpreters LLC, and this is the physical address for the company, as you know. And we saw in that video that I shared with you 
you know, these lovely uh, um, board meeting minutes that they had on February 7th, 2017 with their leaders. Feel free to pause any of these uh, slides if you need to read a little bit more because I'm just uh, going to go through them uh, fairly fast. And then you see how they were talking about, um, you know, finalizing, you know, the negotiations between uh, one lingua, sorry, between uh, their union and Leroy Mold and e interpreters, right? So you see that, you see how they were talking about wonderful things like, you know, discussing uh, how, whether or not they could exclude an interpreter from the exclusive database, denying a member benefit to a union member. Wonderful, right? And then they were talking about uh, some other wonderful things like you see right here, like including removing from the database those interpreters who, who, whom client indicates are no longer in good standing. And look at this name right here, Jeffrey Camp, business manager for One Lingua and Leroy Mulder president. So you saw all of that and you saw again right here, their signatures, okay? So yeah, so you know a little bit that One Lingua also from watching my video, this is the RFP or request for a proposal that closed on um, October 4th last year and One Lingua was one of the companies that was bidding for the contract, right? And so you see right here One Lingua LLC is LDBAR at eInterpreters.com. Also, you see how from a public disclosure request that I made to LNI, I found out these things that you could do as well if you are a legal nerd like me. If you don't like to read, then it's not for you, but you could see that One Lingua also was bidding for the HCA contract and wasn't awarded, and LNI was surprised. Uh, that they didn't get any consideration for this, right? And then you saw also actually didn't see this. This is something that I wanted to share with you. But this company, My Language Link, the appearance winner, uh, was also bidding for the contract. But what's the connection? You know, because they said we don't know much about this company other than they're not ULS. We're happy about that, and uh, they're not uh, CTS Language Link. You know, LNI didn't choose ULS, and this company is not CTS Language Link, right? Well. Let's see, what are the connections to Local 1671, real quick. Let's see the formation of this company, Language Link. Note right here, okay? Language Link Corp, DBA, doing business as My Language Link Corporation, right? A profit corporation, and the incorporation date was May 20th, 2011, as you saw from the description in their website. They started out in 2011. And they started doing business March 10th, 2014, right? So you see right from the get-go, this is from the Secretary of State. I'm not giving you gossip. I'm not giving you any hearsay. These are facts. We take time to, res uh, to research this. And we actually analyze any leads and information from our sources to verify this is actually, uh, you know, truthful. Now, if you keep on reading from, you know, the Secretary of State, what do you see right here? Language Link Corporation? Oh, but wait a minute. Who's this guy right here? Eduardo Miguel Zaldibar. Look at this. Isn't that one lingua's owner? Also appearing here for my language link? What's going on here? I thought they didn't know about this company. But the same owner for one lingua, okay, Eduardo Zaldibar, is here. And then you, you see right here something interesting, you know, uh, we're waiting for the RFP to be approved. Now, note, this is from March 10th, 2014. And then I want you to look at this name right here, Marisa Gilio, which is the president of that company based out of Connecticut, right? So we're talking about the same company, and you see the first connection right here, Eduardo Zaldibar, owner of One Lingua. And then you see again, uh, the president, Marisa Gilio. Please remember that name because we're going to see this name again in the presentation out of Connecticut. And that's the signature. And that's uh, September 5th, 2014, Office of the Secretary of State. Now, here is some more information. Okay, a little clear here. Uh, one lingu uh, la language link corp. This is a, the business type is a foreign profit corporation. Hmm, it's active, okay, and what's happening right here? They reincorporated or, um, you know, uh, updated their information as of November 19th, 2019, November 19th, 2019, last year, 
And who is the registered agent name? Eduardo Zaldivar. Yes, Milena's friend and, you know, uh, owner of uh, One Lingua. You saw the contract that they had. So please don't tell me that you didn't know who these people were. You didn't know because you are in the process of gathering as much information as you can. The only thing you know is that, oh, they are not CTS Language Link. And we are so happy that L and I didn't choose ULS. Police. Okay, let's stop with the charade and let's accept things as they are. Even though this is not legal, be honest and accept. You're all in cahoots. You want to get this LNI contract one way or another. And then you see right here again Eduardo Zaldibar um, as the registered agent right here, the formation date. Okay, and then you see the governor, one individual named. Marisa Gilio again as of last year. So this lady is still uh, the governor for this corporation. So let's keep on with this. Now, let's see a connection between Milena and Eduardo Zaldivar. So what is this? This is Washington Interpreters and Translators Society, WITS. And this is, of course, from uh, November, sorry, no, uh, spring 2013. And so you see as an officer, you see our friend right here, Milena Calderari Waldron, and then you see some other committee chairs, some other names here, officer manager. But wait a minute, what do you see right here? Corporate members, Eduardo Zaldivar. So not only did they know each other from that contract or failed contract that were they were trying to implement. Uh, in 2017, I don't even know what happened to that. A lot of their members say they never heard of that before. But they have worked together. They're part of this Washington Interpreters and Translators Society, or they were part of it at least in 2013. So, so they know each other, okay? Now, what do we see right here? This is the American Translate Translators Association, ATA Medical Division. Oh, look at this name right here. The division administrator is Marisa Gilio, governor, president, and owner of My Language Link. And she even lists her email address right here at gilio at mylanguagelink.org. I just want you to let that sink in a little bit so you see the connections right here, okay? Now, you see the uh, ATA, American Translators Association, and this is uh, from January 14th, 2019, New Code of Conduct for Washington State Judiciary Interpreters. You know, so they developed this on January last year. But who do we find here? We find our friend Milena Calderari Waldron, Washington Court Certified Spanish Interpreter, as part of the draft drafting work group. So Milena is part of American Translators Association also. Uh, this lady, you know, she's really smart. I, I gotta say this, she's everywhere, she's a hard worker. So this is in no way attacking her personally, but exposing actually the relationship and their connections to these companies. Okay, so yes, she's part of these uh, ATA, but it keeps on going. ATA adds interpreter credentials to its online directory. Right? It says it's an exciting new addition to the ATA directory of translators and interpreters. And so this is something that they did also. But what happens here? Who do we find here? Oh, look at this. The ATA Interpretation Policy Advisory Committee managed this project from beginning to end. Thanks to thanks go to Melinda Gonzalez Hipner, chair, and committee members Milena Calderari Waldron, Tony Guerra. Marisa Gilio, owner, president, governor of My Language Link, the new company that L and I is announcing it's an apparent successful bidder. So there you go. But hey, no, remember, they just sent an email or some communication saying, Oh, we are in the process of gathering as much information as we can from this company because, oh my gosh, we don't even know who they are. We have no idea who these people are. At least, L and I didn't choose Universal Language Service, and all we know is that they are not CTS Language Link. So the mystery is resolved. Once again, please be honest once in your life. 
It would serve you good if you start telling the truth for once in your life. Local 6671, Wolf Seed Leadership. I mean, at this point, and I'm sorry to say this, it is pathetic. I mean, the internet is forever, ladies and gentlemen. It is forever. Now, let's talk about Eduardo Zardiva. And I want you to know that I'm not trying to attack anybody personally. Yes, I get upset because when you discover these things, there's no nice way of exposing these things. So you try to be careful not to make personal accusations, but at the same time, lay the facts and let you guys decide. So so this is Eduardo Zaldivar. Okay, this is his face. Um, President E. Interpreters. Okay, Greater Seattle Area. So you see right here who he is. Okay, look at him. And then uh, this is another picture of him, and this is actually his Facebook uh, uh, profile looks like, right? All right, so let's keep on looking at these uh, pictures. It, it, he wrote this on February 25th. It says, I consider this a very unfortunate and fishy thing. Since when do we need to disclose our political affiliation in order to be allowed to vote? Why is the declaration for the Democratic Party a preference and a membership for the Republicans? How can I vote for Trump if I am not a Republican but happen to like his policies? They are forcing those that like Trump to state that they are Republicans. But worst of all, the vote is secret. So I am not here to play politi uh, politics. I'm not here to, you know, say he's a Trump supporter, so he's, he's a bad person. But what I'm here to say is, you know, most of these unions, especially Wolsey and the other union, they claim to, you know, lean to the left and, and, and pander to, you know, uh, Democrat, Democratic, uh, um, in the Democratic Party and their leadership. And so this is kind of strange to me, right? So it says right here, in fact, I don't need to vote if I want to vote for Trump. Looks like he's a Trump supporter which, you know, is not in line with what, what they, you know, um, feel and, and, and identify with. And they'll tell you that they'll work with anybody in the legislature as long as they get what they want. But in reality, they lean to the left. And so, you know, this is very interesting to me. But that's not what surprised me. And it, this is not what's concerning to me. The, the next few slides actually concern me the most when it comes to this. It says right here, do us a favor. Morning Joe, please shut up. If you don't like to hear him, turn off your TV. Simple as that. Looks like he's very passionate about what he, what he believes, and that's okay. You know, he, he looks to be, seems to be a Trump supporter. And then, look at this. He's like, I can't believe that this idiot, Joe Scarborough, he was a very conservative Republican in the 90s. He's even, he even was a part, part of the Reagan years in the, in the government as a U.S. representative in the Congress. What happened to him? He's very passionate. Looks like, you know, he's got a lot of class, you know, I guess. Um, but this is what concerned me right here. So, WashingtonTimes.com, November 12, 2019. Islamic State operating in Mexico, just eight miles from the U.S. border. And looks like Mr. Saldivar said, this is not a surprise, at least for me, and Mr. Trump. So, look like, looks like this guy has some strong views about Mexicans, immigration, uh, Mr. Trump. You know, it's not a surprise to him that the, the, the Islamic State is in Mexico. Whether this is true or not, this is how he feels. So, keep in mind, this is uh, somebody that's a registered agent for the company that Ellen and I chose. So please keep that in mind. And this is not attacking anybody personally, but just sharing with you things that have been shared with me. Okay? And now this is also concerning here. It says, California, while well, Pelosi, Harris, Waters, Schiff, Feinstein, and Swalwell want to tell President Trump how to run the country, this is how they run their own state. So he's definitely against, you know, democratic leadership in California. And these seem to be pictures of the homelessness going on. But somehow it's been tied to illegal immigration. It says right here, Trump 2020, stand with California and against illegal immigration. So truth. And then Mr. Sardibar says, yep. So I'm a little confused right here as to how illegal immigrants are responsible for the homelessness in California. I'm not sure. 
but for whatever reason, it looks like uh, Mr. Sardibar or whoever administers his uh, Facebook page and profile believe this is all because of illegal immigration. I mean, that's at least the way I, I look at it, the way it seems here. So I'm not here to talk bad about the man or say he's a horrible person, but this is public. This is a Facebook page, Facebook profile. So there you go, um, LNI. There you go, Wolfsey. There you go, Local 1671. You know, you lie about, you know, your affiliation with My Language Link. You don't know anything about them. And then we find out it's the same usual suspects, you know, the same people. What can you do? What can you do? You know? So let's talk about this. So, hi, again. So you saw this information. To me, this is uh, upsetting concerning and just pl plain sad, you know? I don't know why people have to lie this way. So, you know, Wolfsey has been saying that agencies have monopolized LNI and so they lobbied LNI and got rid of the agency. So by September, agencies are not gonna be able to bill on behalf of interpreters anymore by September or, or whenever the system gets implemented by, by the looks of it, it's gonna take some time. But, you know, they, then it, good agencies suffered. Now they're going, you know, against independent interpreters, you know, saying that we independent interpreters are the privileged few when we are more than a thousand interpreters in the LNI system. But they don't want us to build directly and they want to they limit us to uh, emergency situations and urgent care appointments. And so, you know, but nobody says anything about Wolfsey monopolizing all aspects of interpretation in the state of Washington. They want the SHS, they want LNI, they want the courts, and they'll, they'll, they'll just stoop to any level to do this. So they had one lingua bidding for this contract, and at the same time, the same one lingua's owner, same guy, Eduardo Zaldivar, class act guy, as you saw, he's like, oops, no, I'm not losing this. So we gotta get in somehow. So let's register this company with, you know, Miss Marisa Gilio from ATA Medical Division, because we know each other anyway. We know Milena. I mean, it's part of our friendship, you know. And so let's get in because we gotta get in somehow, right? That's what they did. So yeah, that's not a monopoly, please. And so you know, they demonize anybody who dares to speak against these things or to call it a conflict of interest. You know, it may not be illegal, Local 1671, we'll see. It may not be, you know, found in the commerce laws. You may get away with it. But let me tell you this. This is looking ugly. This is looking bad. And then you have these owners of these companies, you know, expressing themselves about immigrants that way, about brown people like me that way. Shoof. I don't want to be in your shoes. But congratulations, I guess you are swayed L and I to get this company and uh, you know, wow, great job L and I, great job, you know, Wolfsey we'll Local 1671. Uh, good luck explaining this when you knock on doors to L and I interpreters and um, how you didn't know my language link. So with that said, you know, um, I wanna I wanna call out local 1671's leadership and district chairs and everybody. You are decent people. I know most of you, at least from recently, and I know that you want to help people. How can you stand and let people do this and treat your people, district chairs, your interpreters that you represent, how can you let them, you know, deceive your constituents this way, you know? And please don't tell me, los intérpretes le valen pepinos. They think about this like cucumbers. No, no. Please, let's have some decency and please reconsider what kind of union you belong to. And is this the kind of union that you want fighting for your interpreters, your constituents? Seriously, when they do all of this? You know, I, 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 I just, I'm out of words. But I'll tell you this, you know, Wolfsey is desperate. You know, they claim to have 1,500 members in their bargaining unit, but in reality is a lot of people sign with them and a lot of people have opted out. So they have less than 500 paying dues members. So they want LNI interpreters. LNI interpreters, please stand with me. Stand with Washington interpreters. Wake up. Do not let these people take the contract. Call Susan Campbell. 
call Megan Lemon, call Joe Sachs, email your senators, expose this. Let them know this is what's happening. This is not right. And, and, and we'll see Local 1671. You could call me, Anastasio, Washington Interpreters, our team, all of us, sore losers, divisive. Yeah, this is why. Because we expose these things. And we're not going away. It's not over till it's over. And I really hope that somebody notices this. Oh, we're going to put this out there more than just a YouTube video, by the way. Okay? So thank you, wonderful interpreters, again, for tuning in. You know, please look at the links in the description box. We're going to have all of those contacts for uh, LNI, so you can please share this information, this conflict of interest. If you are an agency owner that was bidding for the RFP, you are, you know, you are having the right to protest this. Hopefully you get some of this information. Call me. Let's talk because this is not right. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay home. And if you're working, please be safe. God bless.